What's good everyone, it's your boy Natsu with another video for the channel. Welcome back to DMV Sports Zone. And if you already know this, over the last two and a half years in the DMV Sports YouTube community, I am one of, if not the biggest Jonathan Allen fans. And I'm absolutely stoked that he finally got selected onto the NFL Top 100 player list, a list that is chosen entirely by the players themselves. He was selected as the 88th best player in the NFL. And it's about damn time because I was one of those people when he had two sacks in 2020 that was talking about how Jonathan Allen was one of the best, if not the best defensive players on this team, right? With Emo Chase Young having the great rookie season that he had. Jonathan Allen definitely set up Chase Young and Montez Sweat for a lot of sacks. A lot of sacks in 2020. And when Chase Young went down in 2021, and even when Chase Young was inefficient to the tune of one and a half sacks through nine games in 2021, Jonathan Allen stepped up and he was the guy that was the main sack getter, right? He was the guy that was commanding all the attention over really the last two years when it comes to offensive lines and, and him really collapsing the pocket. I'm just super excited for this man, bro. Like, obviously, his stats in 2021 were really great. Nine sacks, 62 total tackles, 10 tackles for loss, 30 quarterback hits, an 84.9 PFF grade, which ranked third among all interior defensive tackles in the entire NFL, and a 90.9 pass rushing grade, which only, only trailed the legendary Aaron Donald, who is first ballot, future first ballot Hall of Famer. We saw what he did for the Rams against the Bengals in the Super Bowl. So, Jonathan Allen's legit, bro. He's a legit a legit defensive player in this league. And for as much as fans want to hate on him, for as much as fans like to talk about how, oh, he, already, he gets a sack every now and then, but then completely disappears in games. Jonathan Allen consistently, consistently forces pressure up upon opposing offensive lines. And he's just been a great player for us ever since really he came out of Bama in 2017, right? But especially over the last couple of years, his pass rushing grade have have leveled up every single year. And obviously last year was the the elite year, right? The nine sacks plus the pass rushing consistent throughout the season. And um, yeah, of course, Jonathan Allen's also from the DFV, right? Which contributes to my love for him. He grew up in Ashburn, Virginia. He went to Stonebridge High School. We've always got a root for our DMV products. And Jonathan Allen's one of them. And Jonathan Allen is, in my opinion, the best player period on this team and I know that's a hot take you know because I know a lot of people out there might say Terry McCorn right what are you talking about Nazi Terry McCorn is clearly the best player on this, on this team he's the face of the franchise Nazi come on you're out of your mind this is coming from a guy that Terry McCorn's jersey is the only jersey of a current player on the Washington team right now that I have that I've been having for the last couple of years I'm a huge Terry McCorn fan Terry McCorn is my number one favorite player on this team and probably in the entire NFL but I can admit it, and I hope you guys can admit it, that Jonathan Allen's PFF ratings, Madden ratings, national perception, plus the counting stats that he had, kind of shows that he's a better player. Terry McCorn, for as much as I love him, 2021, he only had 77 catches, 1,053 receiving yards, and five touchdowns. And I know a lot of people out there is going to say, oh, Nazi, he didn't really have an elite quarterback last year to really allow him to rack up the stats. That's why I think Terry McCorn is going to be on the top 100 list in 2023. But till this point, Jonathan Allen, no matter what, the last couple of years, he's been he's been the guy on defense. He's been the guy. He's been the guy. And again, when you combine the national perception, and when I say national perception, I mean the PFF ratings. I mean even, heck, Madden ratings, uh, r rankings of defensive linemen in the NFL by certain analysts and stuff. You combine that with the counting stats that I mentioned, combine that with the consistent pressure that Jonathan Allen forces on opposing offenses. I'm sorry. I think Jonathan Allen's the best player on this team. I think he's the best player on this team. And he's only 27. He just turned 27 in January. He's only going to get better. This is his athletic prime. I think this is only the first of many NFL top 100 selections for Jonathan Allen. I think Terry McCorn is, again, going to be a top 100 selection next year. And I get the frustration. I think he should be over guys like Kyle Juszczyk, OBJ, and Matt Jones for sure. I definitely get the frustration. I really do. 
I don't really get the argument that Cordero Patterson didn't deserve to be on the top 100 list over Terry McCorn, which Cordero Patterson had 1,200 total yards last year and 11 total touchdowns. My opinion, he was a better offensive weapon than Terry McCorn in 2021. But I do get the argument that Terry McCorn should have been on the list. Nonetheless, Jonathan Allen, to me, is the better player. And I hope you guys are really realizing it as more people start to talk about the studs on this team. And yeah, it is what it is. I Again, I think Terry McCorn is the face of the franchise. I think that's largely because he plays receiver and his production is more noticeable to a lot of fans out there. And obviously the character, the character, the great character that he has, the leadership skills, all that. Although Jonathan Allen's a great leader himself as well. He just plays in the interior of the defensive line. He's not even an edge, a splashy edge rusher. And I feel like that's the reason why a lot of fans don't really in my opinion, respect Jonathan Allen enough. But luckily, even if some of our fans don't, the NFL does. And they showed it by ranking Jonathan Allen in the top 100.